Welcome back to Longtime Politics. Now, here are some stories in brief. We begin with Plateau State PDP campaign, the People's Democratic Party there. They flagged off their governorship campaign in Mango, the central zone of the state, with the pursuit of a restoration agenda that will see the party back to par after losing to the All Progressives Party in the last election. That's All Progressives Congress. Um, it is a reunification opportunity for aggrieved members of the party to come together during the flag off with former Governor Jonah Jang leading the party candidate Jeremiah Hosseini into the arena for the flag and misspeculations. And to Quara Day, the PDP launched its governorship campaign with the President of Senate, Dr. Bukola Sarake, asking the people of the state to resist plans by some desperate politicians and their local collaborators to hijacking political power in the state. The governorship candidate, Rasak Atawa, Atawa, promised to run a government of welfareism if elected as the state's next governor. The Vice President, Professor Mishibajo, is urging Nigerians to vote for a candidate who will make better use of public funds. Speaking at a rally in the nation's capital, Professor Shibajo reminds the gathering that corruption is Nigeria's major challenge, which according to him was heightened by the previous administration. And some parliament rulers and kingsmen of a Tung local government area of the state have thrown their full support for re-election bid of Governor Ben Ayade also throwing their weight behind behind Ayade's second term bid. Uh, top political leaders, including former military governor of Kwara State, retired Colonel Palm Orga, who led a delegation of traditional rulers, youths, elders from the eight political wards of the local government area on a courtesy call on the governor at the government house in Calabar. The Director General of the People's Democratic Party and the Atiku Presidential Campaign Council, Dr. Bukola Saraki, is, well, he has alleged massive corruption in the oil sector. He disagreed with the figures released by the federal government. In an exclusive interview with Channels Television, he says the consumption figure of petrol released by the federal government is not realistic, and he has linked that to what he says are leakages in the system. The President of Senate says it is a similar situation under the Jonathan government, which was heavily criticized. During the first school discount, one of the major issues that came up there was that we were importing fuel based on an assumption of 30 million liters consumption daily. And all, all statistics, all experts will tell you that Nigeria cannot consume maximum 22, 22 million liters a day. So at that time, we said the Jonathan government was condoning corruption by allowing us to be important. And because of that, we're losing a lot of money. Because instead of capping at 20 million liters a day, we're doing about 30 million liters a day. Now, you will have thought that a government that wants to fight corruption, preventing leakages, would, even if you're going to still maintain subsidy, you would ensure that the subsidy is better managed. Instead of 30 million to bring down the government is doing this based on 50 million liters. So we're not consuming. We cannot consume 50 million liters a day. It is just money being stolen. So it's, it's fraud. A, big time fraud. You think the government, you don't think, yeah. President Buhari is aware of this? They report to him. So I, I'm not that, no, I run his government. But a lot of us have said there is no way. Why is the National Assembly not investigating this? We have. We have said. But where you have an, an environment where agencies of government are emboldened, to describe with regards to the National Assembly. It's a big issue. We have said it, I said it in last year's budget, that, to, that you must bring subsidy into the budget. NNPC convinced the president to say, no, it is not subsidy. On the recovery, but what on the recovery? They're not, they're not drilling oil to produce it. They're just importing petroleum products. Finally, in 2019, after two years, the president has now decided to bring it in. He should have done that all along. But the point is that these, these kind of decisions have led to leakages. Because if it had been properly managed, there is no way we'll be, we'll be based. And we're losing a lot of money. These are the leakages that's happening. This is the real corruption. Elsewhere, the All Progressives Congress, they are reaffirming their commitment to complete all projects abandoned by the People's Democratic Party. And this is in addition to initiating new ones that will positively impact the nation's economy. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Larry Saonulu, blames the People's Democratic Party for failing to complete inherited projects and for initiating new 
uh, new ones, which were later abandoned. Ms. Aysa Nilu adds that the era of sharing the nation's resources are gone for good as the President Mohamed Jabouari led administration will continue to do the right thing to fast track the development of Nigeria as a growing nation. The PDP needs to be reminded that while it has no antecedent of completing projects it inherited or initiated from 1999 to 2015, due to the rapacious disposition of its leaders. The APC administration, led by President Mohamedou Buhari, has made it a cardinal policy to complete abandoned projects it inherited and to start new ones that have high impact on the economy and the re recovery of this country. All the PDP leaders have been shouting this hunger everywhere they go. Nigerians understand clearly what this means. The APC administration has denied the pillagers who have found a home in PDP access to the resources of this country. In the past, during the unfortunate reign of PDP, it was the common Nigerians who were crying of hunger. It was a very emotional moment for the governor of Borno State, Kashim Shatima, when he visited President Mohamed Buhari at the villa, along with some other leaders in the state. The governor was speaking on the security situation in the state and the cause of which he shed some tears. We rushed here on a weekend from setback. We are here because we trust that Allah... Let's get to Madugari, where our correspondent Blessing Tuno gives us an idea on the political atmosphere ahead of the elections. The political scenario in Borno State is gaining momentum with candidates of political parties currently on campaign tour in areas they seek to represent. In southern Borno, for instance, campaigns are ongoing in seven out of the nine local governments of that zone, with the exception of Dambua and Goza local governments, where they currently have security issues. Of course, the northern axis of Borno State is a no-go area for vote seekers, as the recent activities of insurgents has forced an influx of the locals into Meiduguri. By the way, Borno State is an APC state with all the elective positions currently occupied by APC members. But the opposition are putting up a fight and they have warned against the use of government machineries to intimidate them or tampering with the election timetable, especially with the insecurity problems. As for the fate of the IDPs, the INEC said it has registered over 114,000 people and these registrations include transfers, replacements and new registrations. Now this arrangement is supposed to take care of the IDPs and from our last experience during the 2015 elections, we know that IDPs were able to cast their votes from their temporary shelters, especially because they are grouped according to their local governments of origin. And from Bornu, let's take you to River State, where the governor, Yesun Wike, is asking the National Electoral Commission, INEC, to be fair to all political parties as preparation heightened for the general elections. He was also asking that the electoral umpires act in accordance with the dictates of the law by obeying all court rulings, especially the ones concerning the River State governorship election. The governor was speaking on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily. Buruji and Co. had a judgment from the Federal High Court against Adebutu, recognizing Buruji's own team. And I said, INEC immediately wrote to PDP that they are going to comply with the judgment of court. Well, now, yeah, yeah. I, and then I now said, too. Now, look at the way they play the game. Now, the same thing has happened. We are, the court has notified the problems of APC, and one of the factions now wrote to INEC. I said, look, there's no judgment that not a fight, therefore don't take that. We have ours. Now, we, we expected INEC as an unbiased umpire, as having done the same thing with PDP in the case of uh, August 8. Now, so I also have written to APC, we are going to comply with the judgment. Rather, they didn't do that. What they did was notifying them of the judgment.
you, you know, so, oh, with, so you cannot see. With what you're saying now, Your Excellency, you're implying that it looks as if whatever INEC does, you will not see any good in it. This is not whatever INEC does. You must have to show people that you are really sincere in what you are doing. Well, that's it. We wrap up lunchtime politics at this time. But just before we go, uh, we need you to let you know to watch out for details of the interview with the Director General of the PDP Atiku Presidential Campaign Council, Dr. Bukola Sarake, later tonight at 7.30 p.m. on Channels Television. I'll see you soon.